they're not the people that are just only buying things and renting things and, and, and working for other people as employees. See, so what happens is that inflation benefits wealthy people generally through something called asset inflation. That's very simple to understand. It means that if you own real estate or stocks, typically in an inflationary environment, you'll see your real estate value shoot through the roof. The value that when when the average home value went from two to something to four hundred thousand a year, anybody who owned a home received so much wealth, so much of a windfall from the growth in the value of their home that they don't care that the price of carrots is now three dollars instead of two, <laughs> they because they got an extra two hundred thousand dollars in home equity to make up the difference. But what if you're not a homeowner? What if you're a renter? A lot of us are renters, and we know this. A lot of us, and again, this is where economic culture comes into play. I talk about culture a lot in my book, The Ten Commandments of Black Economic Power. Uh, if your culture is that of a renter, then yeah, you're, you're getting hammered. You're, you're, it's, it's like you're getting the bad stuff, but you don't get the good stuff. You're getting, you know, for some people, it's no pain, no gain. For some people, it's just no pain, no pain, meaning that you're getting the pain, but you're getting none of the gain, right? So, 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 so asset inflation actually tends to exceed regular inflation. So if you want your wealth to keep up with inflation, you have to be an investor. This is not optional. This is not something to think about. This is not something you do in your spare time with your extra money. This investing needs to be as fundamental to your economic strategy as paying your bills. It has to be as fundamental as paying off the cell phone. It has to be as fundamental as paying the car note. Investing has to be a part of your family culture at a deep-seated level so that when inflation does hit, which it, it's never going to go away, your family's wealth is able to rise in a way that compensates you for what you're losing when you go to the grocery store and everything's a little more expensive. Also, they have something uh, called debt devaluation. When inflation happens, the value of the dollar drops. So if you are in debt, uh, the, the, then the amount of debt that you have to repay drops because of inflation. So, so now debt is one of those mixed bags. Debt can be good. It can be bad. A lot of wealthy people have a lot of debt. A lot of wealthy people borrow stuff. That's how they get control of assets that allow them to make money. I, I've never told you all that debt is bad. I think debt can be wonderful if you know how to use it properly, but it's terrible if you waste it. So it's just like a, a, a boxer gaining weight uh, or an athlete or any athlete gaining weight. Gaining weight is not always bad and gaining weight is not always good. The question is, are you gaining muscle or are you gaining fat? If you gain another 20 pounds of fat, then yeah, you're going to you're going to stink. You're going to be terrible at what you do. But if you gain 20 pounds of muscle, it might make you far more effective. So so wealthy people that understand investing are able to use debt as a form of economic muscle. They say, let me acquire some debt so I can go acquire an asset that's going to bring me more money in than what I'm paying in interest. So every month I'm paying five thousand a month in interest, but I'm making twenty thousand a month from the ownership of this asset. So I'm winning from that. Now, if you take on that debt so you can go on vacation and go to the Gucci store, then guess what? You might as well be spending your time at Diddy parties because you're basically screwing yourself. That's what you're doing. You're screwing yourself. You're screwing your future. You're putting yourself into an economic jail. But that's what they. That's what they pretty much encourage consumers to do. Go get that credit card so you can go to the mall and max that sucker up. And then you're paying debt in a different sort of capacity. Okay. Uh, also, another thing that wealthy people are able to do when it comes to uh, inflation is because they own businesses, uh, a lot of companies are able to pass the uh, the the additional inflation on to the consumer. So uh, one thing that you saw uh, with uh, big brands like Procter & Gamble and stuff like that was they were being accused of something called shrinkflation. Anybody heard of shrinkflation? How many of you have heard of shrinkflation? Shrinkflation is basically where they were selling you the same stuff, but charging you more money. Or they were selling or they were charging the same price, but shrinking the size of the bag. So before you got, you know, 12 ounces of Oreos or something for $3. So they said, okay, what if we still charge $3, but instead of giving them 12 ounces of Oreos, we'll just give them 10 ounces and they won't notice. They did the same thing with potato chips, pretty much everything. And, and it worked. People just didn't care. They didn't notice. And they would still pay the same price. So they were able to sneakily pass that additional uh, cost burden onto the consumer. And the consumers, uh, they, they complained about it, but they kept buying the stuff. They didn't, you know, people are still, remember, they're addicted. A lot of these, the food is very addictive actually i think it's designed to be that way so they you know when you when you know if you charge an extra 10 percent, if you charge a crackhead 10 percent more for the crack you think you really think they're gonna stop shopping at the at the drug dealer's corner you think you really think they're gonna stop picking up their morning crack no 
So, so the addiction to sugar is real. We know that, right? So that's that's a, a, another way that wealthy people can benefit from inflation. So never ever think that inflation is bad for everybody or that it affects everybody in the exact same way. What you want to do is have a strategy to position yourself and your family in a way where you're going to be able to get the rewards that come with this economy. Inflation wouldn't affect, it wouldn't harm workers as much if companies simply had rules that said, for example, that, that they have to give you raises that match the rate of inflation. That would be huge. But they won't do that. Why? Well, because Congress, members of Congress, those are rich people. They they they're they're beholden to Wall Street. They're beholden to corporate America. They're not beholden to the voters. You really think they're working for the voters? No, the voters are the commodity. They're the commodity. So what happens is a wealthy person goes to a politician. They say, if you do what we say, we'll give you a bunch of money so you can get all the sheep to come vote for you.